Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and in this video we are going to be looking at exercise 13 from Interpreting Earth History by Ritter and Peterson. So you're going to want to turn to page 203 where you'll find exercise 13, Interpretation of Geological Maps. So this is the lab manual's introduction to geologic maps, essentially understanding uh, boundaries, or the, the boundaries that are on geologic maps and also giving you a very basic introduction into cross-sections and interpretation of geologic maps. So in this section here what we're going to do is we're going to use the technique to draw a geologic boundary, we're going to produce a very simple cross-section and we're going to do some interpretation work. Okay, so the first thing is that we have a lot of information at the start of this lab. So page 203 204, 205, 206, 207, 208, 209, and 210 are absolutely stuffed with extremely important information that you will need when doing these labs. Okay, well, do, won't wish I say when doing this exercise. So, don't forget to read them. Okay, you're probably just looking at them thinking, oh, I don't want to do that. But no, in this instance, I really have to insist you read the text at the start of the exercise because it's going to make your life so much easier. Okay, you're doing it for your own good. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do part A to start with. So part A uses the technique illustrated in figure 13.6. So let's turn to figure 13.6. Where are we? 13.6, I'm on the wrong page. Here we go, 13.6. So this is a technique for the essentially the projecting and tracing a planar geologic feature in an area of irregular topography so how does it work well what we're going to do is we're going to find something let's say a fault plane or a layer of rock okay so something that is planar so it's you know flat but essentially it has dip and it has a dip direction so at location A, they measured, in this, in this case, let's say a layer of rock. And so at location A, this layer of rock was dipping at 35 degrees, which you can see written on the diagram here. And the dip direction was approximately northeast-ish. So in order to use this technique, what you have to do is you have to orientate your piece of graph paper down here okay essentially at 90 degrees to the strike all right now the other thing is is you will make a mark on your graph paper here okay at 9000 meters so point a is at 9000 meters so you'll make a point at the top here and that will be 9000 meters then you'll draw a line down at 35 degrees which was, of course, the dip of our layer of rock. So let's go through that again. At location A, we are measuring a the dip of dip and dip direction and strike of a layer of rock. The rock itself is dipping at 35 degrees in a approximately north-easterly direction, and the strike is going approximately northwest-southeast, because of course strike is 90 degrees to the dip direction. Now, in order to use this technique, what we have to do is we have to orientate a piece of graph paper at 90 degrees to the strike. Okay, so the strike is running this way. So naturally, we're going to orientate our graph paper at 90 degrees to it that way. Okay, so that's why our graph paper is positioned like so. So, by the way, you can also see we're on a topographic map here. So... Point A 
is 9,000 meters. So what we're going to do is we're going to come along here. We're going to draw a line. It's going to come down here. And we're going to hit the top of our graph paper here. I'm going to mark this as 9,000 meters. This is going to be our starting point. So from this point, we are going to draw a line which is 35 degrees. All right. And so here's our starting point. We're going to draw a diagonal line, 35 degrees. Okay. And we're going to mark when it crosses certain units. So we're going to mark when it crosses 8,800, 8,600, 8,400, 200, 8,000, 7,800, 7,600, 7,400, etc. And then what we're going to do is we are going to measure, essentially from this point here, we're going to draw a line a very faint line granted or we're going to hold a ruler on the diagram and we're going to see where this line that emanating from this point here crosses the 8800 contour so we're going to come across here nope nothing happening yet and it crosses it there so it crosses the 8800 contour here and it crosses the 8800 contour here okay so, oh, no, wait, we're going to continue because it crosses it here and here. And it also crosses it here and here. Then the 8,600 contour. So, okay, this is our point. We're going to come along out without, we're going to draw a line or we're going to come along with our ruler. We're going to come up here. Okay, there's the 8,600 there, there, and then that's it. 8,400, this point here. Off we go. Where does it cross the 8,400 contour? It crosses it there and then doesn't cross it again. 8,200. We're going to continue from where are we this point here and away we go. And the 8,200 contour is there. And we continue working our way down for each of these contour measurements. And then once we've got all these points, what we're going to do is we're going to simply join them up. And we're going to join them up and essentially this is our boundary so this represents the boundary between this layer of rock here and the next layer of rock here okay so with the bare bare minimum of information we have managed to project where what the likely boundary will be now that is pretty impressive isn't it so we're going to repeat it and we are going to use this diagram right here okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do exactly what we did in figure 13.6 that's part one of part a okay so here is our diagram and in my case I'm going to go for the ruler all right so let me just try and get the graph at the bottom in shot so there it is our starting location is here point a and the rock itself is dipping at 10 degrees almost due west okay so it's dipping 10 degrees that way off to the west okay now that obviously means strike is going to be north south like so so the bed of rock is dipping north south and so that means we have to orientate our graph paper at 90 degrees to strike so we have to orientate our graph paper east west okay so point a falls on the 7200 meter contour so we're going to come down from this point and on our graph paper we're going to draw this point here for 7200 meters okay that's going to be our starting point now from this point we are of course going to draw a diagonal line and the angle of this line is of course based on the dip of the symbol here so 10 degrees so this line is going to be dipping at 10 degrees so remember that's our starting point and we draw a line dipping 10 degrees from this point okay 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and uh, essentially find where the we're going to find where the uh, boundary goes across other contours. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off. Now I'm actually sticking my glasses in my head in this, so, so I do apologise if I get annoyed. So this is seven thousand two hundred. And this is 7,000, so we're going to come across here. And so this point right here is going to be 7,000. Going to come across here. This is going to be 6,800. Going to come across here. This is going to be 6,600, and so on. So you're going to make marks on this diagonal line. It's going to make your life a little easier, okay? And these marks are going to help you, you know, work your position out. Okay, so what's next? Well, next we take our ruler. Okay. And in this case, we are going for 7,000 meters. Okay. So we're going to put our ruler. So we're going to put out, I'm going to put my pencil there just as a starting point. I'm going to put our ruler on. Okay. And we're going to use the marks either side to level our ruler as best we can. Okay, so I'm just going to line up the 10 inch mark and the and the 4.9 millimeter mark, sorry, 4.9 centimeter mark with the line, so there we go. Okay, so as you can see, I have a relatively consistent distance from this line to this line. So I know I've got my ruler set in pretty much the right position. Now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to find everywhere along this line that I cross the 7,000 meter contour. Okay, so where do I cross the 7,000 meter contour? Okay, let me see. Now to be clear, this contour coming around here is 7,400, so that's not what we want. This is 7,200, so this contour right here is going to be the 7,000 contour. So I cross it here, so I'm going to make a mark there. I cross it here, so I'm going to make a mark there. I cross it here, I cross it here, okay? And do I cross it up here? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to pull the book towards me a little bit to see, okay? Uh, do I cross it here? So what, hold on, I've got to work out what this contour here is first. So I'm going to come round. Okay, good. So this is the 7,000 contour here as well. So it's going to be also there. Okay, so you can see this is everywhere that I've crossed the 7,000 meter contour on this line. So I crossed it here. Let me just try and get this back in the middle of the page now. In the middle of the shot, sorry. So I crossed it here, 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 and here. Okay, my next contour is going to be 6,800. And I'm going to start from my point down here at 6,800. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna put my pencil on as my starting point. Then I'm going to try and level off using my ruler. Okay, I've got myself set. And so now I'm gonna try and th find everywhere that I cross the 6,800 contour. Okay, away I go. So I'm coming this way. Well, let's see, where do I cross it? Where, oh, where do I cross the 6,000? Well, remember, the 7,000 is here. The 7,200 is this contour, so way too high. So where, oh, where am I? Okay, so this is the 7,200. This is the 7,000, okay? So that means this point right here is going to be 6,008 hundred right there and you're going to continue doing this and essentially you're going to build up a line of points and once you've done all of them so once you've done but from 7,000 so from 7,200 down to 5,800 essentially you'll have a set of points which you will simply join up and that will be the boundary so that's all relatively straightforward I, I, I don't think you can really find that um, too difficult just you know sit down with your ruler and concentrate for about 10 minutes and you'll have it done pretty fast and once again it's a truly brilliant way for projecting the probable location of a boundary on a map
you know, with minimum effort. So all you need is one data point and you can project pretty much from there. So that's part one of part A. So what is next? Question two. Is the coal seam exposed on both sides of the prominent north-south trending mountain or just on the east side? What is the lowest elevation at which the coal occurs in the map area? Well, it talks about the coal in this area here. Okay, so just let me find the relevant part of the text, for which I apologize. I should have uh, noted this earlier. Where did I find it? Okay, good. So the contact, essentially the, the boundary we've just drawn, uh, the contact is overlain by a coal seam that comprises the lowest 15 foot of the Huntington formation. Okay, so the just above the boundary that we're drawing is a coal seam. Okay, so the position of your coal seam is going to help you answer this question. So the first thing is, is, is the coal seam exposed on both sides of the prominent north-south trending mountain or just on the eastern side? Okay, so let's work out what's our prominent north-south trending mountain. So, okay, so here we go back to our map. All right, well, what we can see is the topography is dropping off on this in this direction. The topography is dropping off in this direction. So this here is our area of high ground. Okay, and as we can see, it broadly trends north-south. Okay, so this is our north-south trending mountain. This high ground right here. Okay. So the question is, is, does the coal seam just appear on this side of it? Well, you're going to have to work that out by drawing the line. Uh, next. Um, what is the lowest elevation at which the coal occurs in the map area? So essentially, we're using the line to work out what is the low, you know, where does the boundary go? Okay. So as we join the dots up, essentially we're going to we're going to work out what's the lowest elevation the line crosses along the way. Okay. So remember the lowest elevation is going to be just above the boundary that we draw. Okay. So if we draw a boundary at 580 meters, essentially the coal seam is going to occur at 581 meters because it's just above the boundary. Okay. So Try and find the lowest elevation that the line you draw crosses. And that's going to answer that question there. Okay, so this is you know quite a quite a, a powerful tool. And in this case, what we've done is we've drawn a map that's showing us where a coal seam is located. And you know, and, and if you are in you know the coal mining business, that's obviously something super helpful. Okay, so that's a very basic procedure for drawing a boundary. Okay, so then we come on to part B. Brace yourself, we're about to do a cross section. Okay, so we're going to use figure 1310, which is this figure down here at the bottom. Okay, so it is a topographic profile. So we already have the topography of the line of section that we'll be using. So that's been done for us, so that's helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this topographic profile and we are going to use the line of section, so A to A prime from figure 13.1. Okay, so where is 13.1? Let's find that diagram. Went too far there. And no, sorry everyone. 13.1, where are you? There it is. Okay, so here is 13.1. Okay, so we can see it's a nice geologic map. Okay, nice thick rock layers, all relatively easy to see. Okay, so depending on how you do this, you're going to use different techniques. Okay, so our line of section goes from 
A at the top here to A prime down here at the bottom. Now, if you are using a hard copy, okay, you're going to use the technique demonstrated in the book. So in the book, it tells you to use a piece of paper and to make marks every time you cross a boundary. So you would take, sorry, just let me find the piece of paper. There we go. You would take your piece of paper. Okay. You would line it up along the line of section. And you would obviously make a starting mark. So that's where A is. And this is where A prime is. Okay. And every time you cross a layer of rock, you would make a mark on your piece of paper. Okay. So you can see I've been doing this for a while. So I can just rip through this relatively quickly. Okay. Make the marks for where I'm transitioning from one layer of rock to another. Okay. So one of the other things I might do is I might make a note of the letter code of the layer of rock. So this layer, this kind of uh, light orange brown layer here, the letter code is ST. So I write ST on here. And I will also write the dip and dip direction because there's one of our dip and strike symbols. Okay. In this case, ST is dipping 23 degrees towards a prime down here at the bottom. Okay. So this is dipping 23 degrees and I'm just going to use an arrow to show me the direction that way towards a prime. Okay. Now I'm going to go along and I'm going to look for other values. So here we go. Here's another dip symbol. This one's dipping 20 degrees to the Northwest. So once again, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to draw another arrow because I'm going to say, right, this bed is angled towards A and it's angled at 20 degrees. Okay, next next uh, bit of data. Here we go. 20 degrees towards A prime. So I'm going to follow where it goes if, right here. And I'm going to draw an arrow here and I'm going to go 20 degrees towards A prime. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm drawing a set of arrows which are telling me the direction in which my bed should be dipping. Okay, now I'm going to do that for the entire uh, sequence of rocks. I'm then going to come over here to my section, which I'll find eventually. Here we go. Then I'm going to put A and A prime on the diagram here. The first thing I'm then going to do is I'm going to make a mark on the diagram for every one of the boundaries. Remember, make a light mark. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to go mad too early. Okay. And then obviously I'm going to use the dip information that I have here to work out what's happening to the bed. So I know this bed here, this bed here, which is ST, is dipping, tw is dipping 23 degrees towards A prime. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to break out the old protractor. Okay, well actually, you know what? I'm going to do it this way. So there's my imaginary horizontal line. There's 10, there's 20, 23 degrees will be there. So I know my line is going to be 23 degrees. Like so, I'm going to draw my line very lightly. Okay, so that's my first line. And so on and so on and so on. Now remember, this is if you're using a hard copy. So obviously you're going to need a piece of paper, a protractor and a ruler is always helpful. Okay. Let's say you are using the computer version. What are you going to do? Well, to start with, it's time to do screen grabs. Now, in order to make your life easier, when you take a screen grab of figure 3.10 and figure Sorry, did I say 3.10? I meant 13.10. Okay. And figure 13.1, well, I think it was. Was it 13.1? Let's find out if I can eventually find it. Hold on, we'll get there eventually. There we go. And figure 13.1. When you take screen grabs of those two, you have to make sure you essentially have set the page to the same size. All right. So you have to be at the same level of magnification for each picture. That way you're going to keep the sizes of 
the uh, topographic profile and the map the same so you can draw your so, you, so everything will be the same scale and that once again will make your life easy so how are you going to do this diagram well you're going to do those screen grabs and then you are going to go and you're going to put those screen grabs into PowerPoint my old favorite and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump over to PowerPoint give me one second please here we go and here's one I made earlier so what do we have well you can see here we have diagram 13.1 okay and what I've done is I've put a rectangle going from A to A prime along the line of section so how have I done this well all I've done is I've drawn a rectangle okay now I just filled it in with white just so it's easier and you can see these rectangles have rather large chunky borders so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the border black first of all and then I'm going to reduce the thickness of the border line I'll make it you know one for instance so it's a bit easier to work with okay so then I can rotate my rectangle using this green circle here now the lovely thing about rectangles in PowerPoint is that the dimensions of the rectangle never change. I can spin it in whatever direction I want, make it whatever angle I want, but the directions, sorry, the dimensions always remain consistent. Okay, so it never changes. And so through rotation, I'll eventually line up my rectangle with my line of section, which is running along here. Okay, so what am I going to do next? Well, next I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to start putting marks on my line on my uh, bit of paper so I'm, okay so here we go so remember I'm going to press down the alt key so I can move these red points wherever I want to okay one there one there one there and I'm going to do this for the entire map. One goes there. So of course these circles represent every time I'm crossing from one bed of rock to another. Okay, oh, I did not mean to do that. That was not what I wanted to do that. Just going to delete those three because I don't need them anymore. So then I'm going to copy this and paste it. And now I'm going to drag that up to the top. I'm sorry if this is terribly boring, but this is, you know, how it's got to be. Okay, I'm now going to position this once again wherever I go from one line to another. Okay, nearly there. Remember, I'm holding down the Alt key as I do this. Okay. Now you can notice here, by the way, this is a fault. All right. But even faults get marked on. So let's just make sure I've marked every single boundary change. I have. Okay, great. So this dot and this dot can go away. Now what I need to do is I need to mark on important information like the dip direction. Okay, so I'm just going to put an arrow here. And here we go, I've got another one here, so I'm just going to put another arrow this way. Okay, what else have I got? Okay, this layer here. I'm going to put the arrow. Sorry, it's a bit difficult to do, but there we go, I'm going to put the arrow that way. This layer here. So you can see I'm just getting down 
the basic information so I know what I'm doing when the, when the time comes to actually do the drawing. Okay, this is going to go this way. What other information do I have? And I think that's it. And now I'm just going to finally finish off by number, first of all, making that very small. And I'm going to note, because so I'm going to put my arm right into the field of shot there, I do apologize. And I'm going to turn this. No, nope, I'm going to make that smaller. Let's go for five. There we go, that's more like it. And then I'm going to put the number with the arrow. So this one's going to be 23. Missed one here, by the way, so there we go. Going to go back and, and fix that. So I'm just going to move that arrow there. Just going to copy and paste the text box. So that's going to be 20 degrees. Okay, this layer here, 20 degrees again. Oh, and this layer here is 20 degrees. I really was not concentrating there, was I? Let's sort out that. Bad work on my part, very shoddy. Okay, so this is 20, that's 20, and then we have this one here which is also 20, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. Oh, what did you get? What do you know? This one's 20 as well. Isn't life working out pretty well for us right now? Okay, all good. You can see that we actually have a dip symbol here, okay, for 20 degrees. So that's also going to be the same as... Now, actually, I need to move this to one side for a second. And that's this one right here. So this one's 20 and this one's 20. So then the hunt is on for any more dip symbols that I've missed. Okay, so we have this one, we have the OBE. Did I miss anything this way? No, got that there, got that there. Okay, it looks like we pretty much have all the information that we can get. So we have our red dots, which is showing where we're going from one layer to another, or faults. Our arrows, which are showing us the dip of those layers. Okay, and the val and the numbers, which are showing us the essentially the uh, the angle of dip. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, what we're going to do now is I'm going to zoom out for a second so that I can select this entire thing here. So I'm selecting the entire lot. Then I'm going to go to group. Okay, so that when I move it, it's going to be moved as a group. Okay, so I'm going to control C and then I'm going to, I'm going to delete that because that was what I was playing about with earlier. Then I'm going to do control V. Okay, so this is what I just drawn on the previous diagram. What am I going to do now? Well, obviously I'm going to rotate this so it's horizontal. There we go. Okay. Just going to double check that's horizontal. Yes, it is. Almost give or take a little bit, but it'll do. Okay. So what do I have? Well, I now have a situation where I have all of these dots here. Okay. And they're telling me where I'm transitioning from one layer of rock to another. I also have these arrows, which are showing me the direction in which the layers of rocks are, are dipping. And then I have the values, which are showing me the angle, the number of degrees at which, you know, uh, at which the layers of rock are dipping. So, all right, let's get this sorted. So, what am I going to do now? Well, again, I'm actually going to uh, ungroup for a second because I want to copy and paste these dots. Okay, I just need one. Sorry about this, I'm just going to zoom out for a second. And 
I'm going to just regroup the entire lot again just so I don't do anything stupid okay so I want these dots so I can draw the position of things on my diagram so I'm going to change the color of the dots now so I'm going to make the dots yellow okay and I'm just going to copy and paste a few of them all right so here we go so I'm just going to mark the positions of the dots on my diagram here do hope everyone's sticking with me I apologize this is not the most riveting bit of the video I think I need a few more dots once again as I move the dots of course I am pressing alt Okay, so now first thing, double check, make sure I've got a dot for every one of the red ones. Yes, I have. So now what I can do is I can move this up ever so slightly so it's a bit away. Okay, so now I need to start drawing my layers that I know. So I can, you know, this layer here is dipping 19 degrees towards A prime. All right, so just like in, the pre, just like in previous labs, I'm going to draw myself a horizontal line. Format, rotate, more rotation options, and I'm going to rotate it to 19 degrees. Return, okay, there's my line. So I'm going to draw, move this. So this layer of rock is dipping at 90 degrees. Now remember, the both the boundaries of this layer of rock must be dipping at 90 degrees, so I can just copy and paste that, can't I? Good, all right. What else? Well, I know this layer here, is dipping at 20 degrees so once again horizontal line okay rotate rotation options and rotate to 20 degrees hold down the alt key remember so I can move it smoothly and obviously the top and bottom contacts are going to be dipping at 20 degrees I know that this layer of rock here is dipping at 23 degrees. Now the dip symbol was all over this side of the layer. So I'm just going to draw this side at 23. I want to know what's happening over here first before I commit to anything else. So, okay, I'm going to draw this line at 23 degrees. Hold down the Alt key so I can move it where I want to. Okay. Now you can see these lines are running approximately parallel to each other. There's a little bit of variation because, of course, that's the way things work in geology. Okay. So what have I got here? Well, I actually have a whole load of a uh, whole load of rocks which are going to be coming the opposite way. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shorten these lines slightly because I want to give myself a bit of room to work with. Okay, obviously I can extend these rocks later. All right, so I know this layer and this layer are going to be dipping at 20 degrees. So now they're dipping 20 degrees towards, towards A over here. Okay, so I am going to have to do them. I'm going to have to do 360 degree, 360 degrees, sorry, minus 20. So it's going to be 340 degrees. That wasn't right. 
there we go so it's going to be 340 degrees bang there we are and so I know that the upper and lower contact of this layer and this layer are dipping at 20 degrees now once again this layer is rather long so I'm just going to shrink this to a more reasonable size so I'm just going to do some copy and pasting I need four of them okay so I know it's going to be the bottom of the layer this layer as well oh do you know what I don't need that one so actually no do you know what I do need that one because these layers are dipping at 20 degrees over here as well which is helpful And then I have these layers over here, which are also dipping at 20 degrees. So once again, horizontal line, rotate, more rotation options, in this case, 20 degrees. And of course, it's going to be the upper and lower contact of that bed of rock will be dipping. Oh, now that was an amateur mistake. Hold down the shift key. That way, there we go. Hold down alt so you can move it easily there okay and so what can we see well instantly we can see it you know get ourselves a bit of an idea of what's going on can't we we can see these layers of rock are coming down this way these layers of rock are coming down this way and so they're going to meet aren't they and form a trough shape so we've got us we've got ourselves a syncline right here then we've got an anticline here but the top of the anticline has been eroded away so we've lost it and then we have ourselves another syncline right here, don't we? So I think we can agree it's pretty obvious what's going on. So we need to just sort out the rest. Now, we need to work out which layer of rock is which. So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually get rid of this. So I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to return to our previous slide here. Okay. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to note all of these different layers so I can keep track of what's what. So I'm going to do that. Oh, now that wasn't a smart move. Let's move that back. Okay. So this layer here is OBL. Now, can I shrink that any more? No, of course I can't, because that would have been far too easy. Okay, so I'm going to have to move this carefully using the Alt key. Now, what I'm, why I'm doing this is because I want to track where certain layers are, so I know what's happening to them. So obviously this is OBL, and I've got OCN is going to be this layer right here. Now once again, I appreciate this is probably extremely boring right now, but this is something that has to be done. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here so that you guys can get up, have a walk around, have a bit of a break and then I'm going to continue. So by the time this video restarts, I'm going to have completed this so you don't have to waste your life watching me move uh, text boxes around. Okay, everyone, so I'm gonna stop here and I'll see you in part two.